the solution used in absorption differential systems may be considered as a homogeneous binary mixer of refrigerant and absorbent okay well, you have noticed that uh, in the thermal compression part uh, of the vapor absorption system we have a solution okay a solution circulates through the components and this so what is the solution this solution is nothing but a mixer of refrigerant and absorbent and for simplicity we assume that it is a binary mixer and it is a homogeneous mixer okay. Now depending upon the boiling point difference between the refrigerant and absorbent and the operating temperatures one may encounter a pure refrigerant vapor or a mixture of refrigerant and absorbent vapor in generator of the absorption system okay. That means while uh, uh, discussing the or describing the simple vapor absorption difference system I mentioned that in the generator you supply heat at high temperature and refrigerant vapor is generated okay and that refrigerant vapor goes to the condenser it gets condensed and all that. But in actual uh, systems depending upon the boiling point uh, temperature difference between the refrigerant and absorbent in addition to the refrigerant vapor you may also have some vapor of the absorbent in the generator okay that means when you are supplying heat to the generator both refrigerant as well as absorbent may boil okay that means what goes to the condenser may not be pure refrigerant but a mixture of refrigerant and absorbent vapors okay whether you have a mixer or a pure refrigerant dep purely depends upon the boiling point temperature difference between uh, the refrigerant and absorbent if you have a very high boiling point temperature difference that means when the absorbent is non volatile then you will find that uh, whatever is generated in the generator is uh, pure refrigerant okay on the other hand if the temperature difference is not too high that means absorbent is also volatile then both will be generated in the generator okay. An example of the first case where you have a non volatile uh, absorbent is uh, when you use uh, water and lithium bromide okay. So, where lithium bromide is absorbent it is non volatile. So, pure water vapor is generated whereas, if you use ammonia water systems where water is absorbent uh, and ammonia is a refrigerant both water and uh, ammonia may be generated in the generator okay. So, this is the difference between uh, different refrigerant absorbent pairs okay. Now, properties of binary solutions are evaluated from pressure temperature composition data. So, if you want to find the properties you have to specify pressure temperature and composition. Composition of the solution can be expressed either in mass fraction or in mole fraction okay. So, what is mass fraction mole fraction? So, mass fraction is uh, defined as uh, okay, mass fraction is also sometimes called as concentration, concentration of component 1. So, I 1 is simply defined as a mass of uh, that particular component divided by the total mass of the solution okay, that means m 1 divided by m 1 plus m 2. Similarly, uh, mass fraction or concentration of component 2 is nothing but mass of that component in the solution m 2 divided by the total mass of the solution okay, m 1 and m 2 are mass of component 1 and 2. So, for a binary uh, system you can very easily show that uh, xi 1 plus xi 2 is equal to 1 from the above expression that means xi 2 is equal to 1 minus xi 1 okay. So, if you know the composition of one component the composition of the other component can be easily obtained okay. Now, the composition in terms of mole fraction. So, in instead of talking about uh, masses we talk about the number of moles. So, mole fraction of component 1 is nothing but the ratio of number of moles of component 1 divided by the total number of moles of component 1 and 2 in the solution okay. Similarly, mole fraction of 2 x 2 is given by n 2 divided by n 1 plus n 2 where n 1 and n 2 are number of moles of components 1 and 2 okay. Just like uh, the mass fraction uh, it can be very easily shown, shown that x 1 plus x 2 is equal to 1 or x 2 is equal to 1 minus x 1. And very another very important property as far as refrigerant absorbent uh, pairs are concerned is what is known as miscibility okay. And miscibility is an important property and it depends upon the operating conditions that means under certain operating conditions a refrigerant absorbent pair may not be very highly miscible whereas at other condition they may be highly miscible okay. So, it depends upon the operating conditions. And generally refrigerant absorbent pairs must be completely miscible both in liquid as well as vapor phases. So, that is how you choose the pairs so that uh, they get mixed completely and you get a homogeneous mixer. Now, let us define uh, what is known as an ideal homogeneous binary mixer okay. A solution is called as an ideal solution if 
specific volume of the mixer is equal to the sum of the volume of its constituents. That means let us take a binary mixer, I take uh, uh, component 1 and component 2, component 1 has a specific volume of uh, V1 and uh, component 2 has specific volume V2 and I mix certain masses of these two components. You will find that the specific volume of the mixer is simply equal to the volumes of its constituents, okay, sum of the volume of its constituents. Okay. No. Then uh, during this mixing process, neither heat is generated nor absorbed. Okay, so this is another characteristic of uh, ideal solution. And the mixer obeys uh, Rawls law in uh, liquid phase and the mixer also obeys Dalton's law in vapor phase. So these are the four uh, conditions, they are not totally unrelated, actually these conditions are related. But uh, these are uh, based on these uh, four uh, points, you can say whether a solution behaves as an ideal solution or not. Okay. So, uh, let us look at mathematically what do we mean by this. So, uh, condition 1, condition 1 as I mentioned uh, of the solution of the specific volume of the solution should be simply equal to the sum, uh, sum total of the specific volumes of the uh, components. Okay. So, this is the mass fraction of component 1 and this is specific volume of component 1, this is the mass fraction of component 2, this is the specific volume of comp uh, component 2. Okay. So, the specific volume of the mixer is simply equal to this, this means the um, solution neither expands nor contracts, that means there will not be any volume change upon mixing. Okay. So, this is for, for condition 1 and condition 2, the specific enthalpy. Okay, since the no heat is released or absorbed, it can be very easily shown that the specific enthalpy of the solution is simply equal to the weighted average uh, enthalpies of component 1 and component 2. Okay. Xi1 and Xi2 as I said are mass fractions, H1 and H2 are the specific enthalpies of component 1 and 2 at that particular temperature and pressure. Okay. So, the same thing can be written in this form okay, because xi1, xi2 is equal to 1 minus xi1. This is the condition, the second condition and what is Raoult's law? Raoult's law says that for an ideal solution, the vapor pressure exerted by component 1 is simply equal to the product of its liquid phase mole fraction x1, x1 is equal to liquid phase mole fraction. Okay. So, it is a uh, vapor pressure exerted by component 1 is equal to the product of liquid phase mole fraction x1 into P1 sat. What is P1 sat? P1 sat is nothing but the saturated pressure of uh, the, this uh, component 1 at that particular temperature T. Okay. So, P1 sat is this. So, the vapor pressure is given uh, for component 1 is given by this, for component 2 is given by this, okay, where x2 is the liquid phase mole fraction of component 2. So, this is what is known as Raoult's law. Okay. So, if you know the composition uh, composition, and if you also know the saturation properties, you can find out what is the vapor pressures in solution. Okay. What is Dalton's law? If you remember Dalton's law is for the vapor phase and it says that the vapor pressure in vapor phase is equal to the mole fraction of component 1 in vapor phase into the total pressure P total. Similarly, the vapor pressure for component 2 is equal to the product of mole fraction y2 into the total pressure. Okay, this is the Dalton's law. Okay. So, you can easily show that the vapor phase mole fraction y1 and y2 are related by this expression y1 plus y2 is equal to 1 just like your liquid phase mole fraction. So, y2 is y1 minus y1 and the total pressure, total pressure is nothing but the sum total of the pressures exerted by component 1 plus component 2, okay, PV1 plus PV2. Suppose if you have a component uh, which is non-volatile, let us say that component 2 is non-volatile, then Y2 is equal to, it is almost Y2 is equal to 0, that means what you have is only pure vapor, or only volatile uh, component boils off and uh, Y2 is equal to 0, that means Y1 is equal to 1. So, in the such case, when you are clubbing uh, Raoult's law and uh, Dalton's law, you can very easily show that total pressure exerted is simply equal to vapor, uh, vapor pressure exerted by component 1, which is equal to x1 into p1 sat. Okay. That means, again, if you know the saturated properties for the volatile component and if you also know the uh, composition, then you can easily calculate what is the total pressure exerted. Okay. So, these are the ideal solutions. Obviously, the real solutions uh, are not ideal solutions. A real solution uh, either contracts or expands upon mixing. That means, the specific volume V is not equal to xi1 V1 plus xi2 V2 
and either heat is evolved or heat is absorbed upon mixing. That means the mixing process is exothermic, either exothermic or endothermic. That means H is not equal to xi1 H1 plus xi2 H2, but it is equal to xi1 H1 plus xi2 H2 plus delta H mix, where delta H mix is called as heat of mixing, which could be positive or negative. So, the difference between uh, ideal and real solutions can be attributed to their deviation from Rall's law. Okay. So, let me show that. So, what I have shown here uh, is uh, the mole fraction of component 2 versus pressure. Okay. When the mole fraction is 1, uh, 0 here, that means you have pure component 1 and here you have component 2. Okay. So that is why the pressure here is nothing but the saturation pressure uh, of component 1 and the pr pressure here is the saturation pressure of component 2. Remember that the temperature is constant here. And if the solution behaves an ideal uh, solution, you have this line because at any point the pressure is simply equal to uh, x1 uh, p1 plus x2 p2. Okay, that is from your Rall's law. But the real solutions will deviate either in a positive manner or in a negative manner. If they deviate from a positive in a positive manner, the actual vapor pressure will be larger than the vapor pressure predicted by Rall's law. Okay, this is what you call as positive deviation. And if they deviate in a negative manner, you find that the actual pressure is less than the pressure predicted by the uh, ideal solution. Okay. Um, that is uh, from the Rawls law. Okay, this you call it as negative uh, deviation from Rawls law. Okay, the same thing you can also show on enthalpy chart. What I have shown here is only for the negative uh, deviation. Okay, so real solutions with negative deviation because this is what you encounter in uh, vapor absorption refrigerant systems. So for uh, real solutions with uh, negative deviation, you will find that the delta H, delta H mix is negative. Okay, that means heat is evolved. Uh, during the mixing process, that means this process is exothermic. Okay, and this straight line gives the enthalpy of an ideal solution, and the enthalpy of real solution with negative deviation will be less than uh, this because the delta H mix is negative. Okay. So as I said, if the deviation is positive, then at a given temperature and composition, vapor pressure exerted is greater than that predicted by Rall's law. And heat of mixing is positive, that means endothermic. For uh, positive deviation, it is endothermic. For negative deviation, it is exothermic. So, the reverse is true if the deviation is negative. Now, let us look at simple vapor absorption refrigerant systems. A simple single stage vapor absorption refrigerant system consists of a solution heat exchanger in addition to the basic components. The solution heat exchanger improves the performance of the system by reducing heat input to the generator and heat rejected at the absorber. That means the only difference between the earlier basic system and this simple practical system is an addition of one component that is called as solution heat exchanger. So what we have done in this system is an extra component is added, this is called uh, solution heat exchanger. What is the function of this solution heat exchanger? This solution heat exchanger preheats, okay, preheats the solution that is going to the generator by using the heat of the solution that is coming from the generator. So, you can see that there is a heat exchange between the hot solution coming from the generator and the cold solution that is going to the generator. So, there is a heat exchange. As a result, QZ reduces, this also reduces. Okay. So, that is a function of the uh, solution heat exchanger here. Rest of the components are same. Okay. In fact, this figure is shown as pressure versus uh, temperature. Okay. They have, uh, so, the, you can also see the respective pressures and temperatures on this diagram. Okay. This I will explain in detail when we discuss the actual systems. Now, let me quickly look at the refrigerant absorbent combinations. The desirable properties are the refrigerant should exhibit high solubility with solution in the absorber, it should be highly soluble in the absorber and the difference in boiling points should be large, so that only refrigerant boils in the generator. Okay, so, this is another uh, desirable point and heat of mixing should be small. Okay. Of course, point 1 and 3 are contradictory, you cannot have both. Okay. Uh, then there should be no crystallization or solidification inside the system. We will see what is crystallization or solidification in the next class. Okay. Then the solution should be non-corrosive and it should exhibit good transport properties that means the thermal conductivity should be high and viscosity should be low. So, these are the desirable properties and based on these desirable properties, uh, there are two most commonly used refrigerant absorbent pairs, they are water lithium bromide for large capacity air conditioning applications and ammonia water uh, for large and small capacity refrigeration applications. So, we will be discussing these systems in detail in next class, uh, one or two lectures. Okay. 
And there are also uh, other uh, refrigerant absorbent paste which are in uh, at research level they are not yet commercialized. Okay. So, basically the most important paste as far as uh, the commercialized systems are concerned are water lithium bromide and ammonia water paste. Okay. Now, let me quickly summarize what we have learned in this lesson. In this lesson uh, basic concepts in absorption refrigerant systems are introduced and simple vapor absorption refrigerant systems are described and expressions for maximum COP of an ideal absorption system is derived and properties of ideal and real solutions are discussed and finally, we have listed desirable properties of refrigerant absorbent combinations. Okay. In the next le le lecture, I shall uh, discuss uh, lithium bromide water systems. Okay. After that, I shall discuss ammonia water systems. Okay. Thank you. Welcome back. In the last lecture, I introduced vapor absorption refrigeration systems and I mentioned that the two most commonly used refrigerant absorbent paints are those based on water lithium bromide and ammonia water systems. In the present lecture, I shall discuss uh, the absorption systems based on water and lithium bromide and the specific objectives of this particular lesson are introduce water lithium bromide systems discuss property evaluation with the help of property charts, present study flow analysis of the system, discuss typical uh, problems associated with this system and finally, describe commercial systems. And at the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain basic principles of water lithium bromide systems, obtain uh, relevant solution properties using property charts, evaluate steady state performance of the system describe practical problems and discuss commercial system practices.